I find giants. I hunt giants. I kill giants. <laughs> And before I get into the book, bear with me for a bit as I go into a bit of a preamble to give you the context for how I feel about I Kill Giants. Now, I'm going to include a timestamp here if you want to skip the preamble and just watch me talk about the book, although I will be referring back to some of the points in the introduction. Now, there are a number of things I look for when I consume media. If any of them are lacking, that doesn't mean the property is bad, but it does suggest that it won't be particularly memorable for me, or at least that I won't consider it a favorite by any means. The more of them that are present, the more highly I will regard the media in question. Now, these three criteria are as follows. Number one, it inspires me. Whether in prose or presentation, in concept or execution, if what I am watching, playing, or reading gives me ideas and makes me want to create something of my own, then it is worth noticing. The stronger the effect, the more memorable the property is for me. Number two, it moves me. I am a sensitive person, not afraid of crying. However, I often find books and movies try too hard to be emotional, and it doesn't always land for me. Therefore, if the media I am consuming manages to stir emotions in me, I take notice. The better this is executed, and the stronger the impact it has on me, the more I will latch onto the property and hold it in high regards. And number three, it does something different. I have read, watched, and played a lot. I particularly like science fiction, fantasy, video games, anime, comic books of all varieties, and more. So, I have experienced a ton of different concepts, some very unique and others less so. And I am aware that unique ideas are hard to come by, so I don't necessarily need unique, but if a project does something new, or it does something old in a new way, I take notice. Now, I say all of that so you understand why I Kill Giants is so memorable for me, because it hits all three points. A lot of stories will only hit one point and still be memorable for me. But the ones I go back to time and again are those that hit at least two of the points. And my absolute favorites are the ones that hit all three. That's why I love books like Sandman by Neil Gaiman. It's why I always remember Asterios Polyp by David Mazzucchelli. And it's why I love I Kill Giants and have read it several times. I Kill Giants was written by Joe Kelly with art by Kin Nimura. It's a story about a girl named Barbara, who lives in a seaside town with her big sister. Barbara is abrasive, rude, and possibly delusional. She wears bunny rabbit ears, carries around a purse with a rune on it that she drew with her own blood, and supposedly contains a size-changing warhammer called Kovaleski and loves Dungeons and & Dragons and baseball. And oh yeah, she finds giants, she hunts giants, and she kills giants. As a protagonist, Barbara isn't very likable. Normally, this would be the death knell for a book, as it's difficult to enjoy any story the main character you follow is not someone you would want to spend time with. But it's different with Barbara. There are hints that something more is going on beneath the surface. A lot of what keeps you coming back is that her rudeness might be somewhat earned. Maybe. She doesn't get along with others in part because they don't believe her about the giants. But the thing is, she also sees and interacts with fairies when she isn't around others. There is a strong implication that what she says is true. Or maybe she's crazy and only thinks it's true. Either way, it helps you as the reader understand that her experiences don't line up with those of others, which makes it understandable why she lashes out at their disdain and mockery. And that's one of the first things that really connected with me with I Kill Giants. This is not a normal protagonist. 
This isn't someone who is inspiring, a superhero like Iron Man or Superman. This isn't the typical down-on-their-luck hero who is really pure but deals with bullies or a difficult world. No, this is a character who is abrasive and difficult to get along with, has problems with authority, and doesn't have any friends and doesn't know how to fit into society. Chances are, we have all met someone like this. We might even see some of ourselves in her and not want to admit it. Because these are not traits anyone should want to emulate. But, we can relate. We have all experienced people who don't believe us when we are telling the truth. Or believing in something so firmly when no one else does. You know, whether it be you know, religious or political or scientific or you name it. And possibly being wrong about it. It simply isn't normal to have such a flawed and generally unlikable protagonist and still have the book be enjoyable, but it really works here. The reader is left wanting to know if Barbara is right or if she's crazy, and really, it could go either way. I mean, sure, we readers get to see the fairies, but are they really there, or are we just seeing what Barbara sees? We get hints of the truth along the way, and when the cracks in the facade begin to grow, the relatability increases. We see the uneasy situation of Barbara's home life, with her big sister playing mom while still trying to be a teenager. Between her relationship with her sister, her counselor, a new friend, her classmates, Barbara's psychological situation is showcased in a very sensitive fashion. The deft handling of such complicated psychological development is one of the things that makes this book a masterpiece. By the time you reach the end and you have a full understanding of everything, it will make you look at everything in a whole new light. It isn't some major twist that comes out of left field, but it grants the reader a whole new perspective that they can only guess at or maybe surmise about early on. It makes rereads stronger and more effective, even adding weight to earlier scenes when you understand why certain situations occur the way they do. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm, I'm going to try to keep it vague, but I will have to suffice to say that it gets quite heavy. This is a story that is very much focused on the psychological situation of the main character. Though the impact will understandably differ from person to person, this is a story that makes me cry every time I read it, and I love it. As I already mentioned, rereads hit differently and I find myself getting choked up at early scenes that initially had little impact because I better understand what is going on. Most media, outside of music, gets less emotional for me upon repeat viewing. But I Kill Giants is anomalous in that it only gets more emotional every single time. And furthermore, I Kill Giants has changed the way I think about my own writing. Reading this book had an immediate effect on how I write, specifically a story I was working on at the time called Depth Perception. And I don't know that it necessarily changed the story all that much, but seeing how Joe Kelly wove Barbara's psychological state and personal experiences into every aspect of the book made me think a lot more about how my own character's experiences affected the way that he sees and interacts with the world. And this is a heavy book that deals with complex themes. It showcases developmental psychology, grief, anger, and a whole lot more, all wrapped in a package that seems contrary to these ideas, which is itself playing into the concepts. In fact, Ken Nimura's art is kinetic and a bit sketchy, which serves to perfectly illustrate the contrasting dynamics of the story we are exploring. This is a drama illustrated like an action story. A very personal tale depicted as a sweeping epic. An anime stylized quirky adventure set in a serene coastal town in the United States. It's a series of contradictions with purpose, deliberately contrasting to highlight key elements and themes. Though Joe Kelly may be better known for other stuff, for instance, he is primarily responsible for Deadpool as we know him today specifically the fourth wall breaking and self-awareness, 
I personally feel that I Kill Giants is his magnum opus. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. I've read it multiple times, which should tell you something, because I generally don't like rereading very much of anything. If you're down for a good drama, something a little bit different, and you're open for a story that might make you emotional, then I can't recommend this book enough. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the movie adaptation of I Kill Giants starring Zoe Saldana. I was initially a bit wary when I heard they were making it into a movie. That is, until I heard that Joe Kelly himself was writing the screenplay. When I heard that, that skepticism instantly turned into anticipation. I was eagerly looking forward to this movie's release, though I had no idea when it would actually come out. I figured, I know a lot of people are into comics, I visit a comic book store regularly, uh, I'll hear about it soon enough. So, I waited. And then I saw a preview for it pop up online. Only... the release date listed in the trailer had already passed. So I looked it up, and sure enough, it had been in theaters and had already come and gone. Turns out, it had such a limited release that nowhere around me was showing it. I'm not sure there even would have been an opportunity for me to see it had I been aware of its release. And that really sucked. I really wanted to go see this movie in theaters. Now, I suspect the distributors didn't have much faith in the movie and weren't really sure how to market it. And I do understand that. It has the trappings of a fantastical adventure story, but it's really more of a drama. It looks like it's going to be this epic tale with grand fight scenes, but it cares more about the character's emotions than the special effects. Which are pretty good, regardless. It's the sort of story that might perform well at the Sundance Film Festival, winning indie movie awards, but it's packaged like a Hollywood blockbuster. And truth be told, it doesn't really fit well into either category. So while it's unfortunate, and I wish it had more of a chance, that more people could have seen it, I do at least understand why it worked out the way that it did. All that being said, the movie's pretty good. It does have the problem of any adaptation of a highly stylized work, that it loses the art that made it so unique. But that is unfortunately to be expected. Short of making it into an anime movie, there simply is no way to retain that element adequately. Although, quick side note, I would be curious to see more movies play with rotoscoping in the vein of A Scanner Darkly. Joe Kelly did a good job of modifying the story to fit a film, as any transition from one medium to another necessitates changes to the material. Granted, I haven't reread the book since watching the movie, so I'll have to go back and maybe read the book and watch the movie back to back and see how I feel then. But for now, I can say that both are good. But overall, I can't recommend I Kill Giants enough. Whether it's the comic or the movie, you owe it to yourself to give it a try. Though I would obviously recommend the comic more. But now if you'll excuse me, I think I need to go reread it again. I am a bit overdue for a good cry. Be sure to help me out by hitting like and subscribe. Leave a comment to let me know your thoughts. And until next time, this is Uncle Joel saying, stay tangible.